Tipping the scales of 4,590 pounds, this is a 231 Sportsman Rear Kitchen Couples Camper down here at A1 RV of Coldwater, Michigan. My name is Josh Aravina. I'll be your tour guide today, as it were. Um, overall, looks to be pretty well kept. You can see there's like one little flaking decal on the nose, but that's really the only defect I've been able to detect throughout the entire thing with about 12 years of experience. If you're looking for something half ton, potentially even appropriate tow package SUV towable, this little thing might be a solid little option for you. And, and really, I don't even know that it needs to be like a couple's rig. It's got decent guest capacity, but I could see just one person bopping around this and having a good time too. And if you need hitching, if you need financing, remember, we do all that stuff for you down here as well. Let's take a look inside. I think you're going to like what you see. Carpetless, easy cleaning little bugger too. Now apologies if it's a little dimmer in here than it should be, and if you hear it chirping regularly, the uh, battery on the front is getting a little low, and it's still running the LED lights, but not at the capacity with which you should normally expect to see them. Thankfully, we've got some really nice daylight pouring in through these windows, so it'll still feel pretty good and bright in here. Um, the uh, windows, speaking of which, you've got cross breeze windows across from the seating, and I like that dual corner breeze window there by the rear kitchen. That's kind of like a classic Jayco feature that uh, a lot of brands have sent adopted in their rear kitchen models um overall here like i said sharp little camper if what you're looking for like you're like hey listen you know we want to have a nice space on the inside if it is if we are stuck inside on a little bit of a rainy day but we spend a lot of our time outdoors you know i think this would be a good option for you all of the countertops are a sealed edge press membrane material by the way whether you're in the kitchen or uh the dining table whatever you know they're the type of counters that are good for repelling water now, uh, I want to show you some of the storage because being a rear kitchen storage is a key component of this one. We're going to start up top here, work our way down past those windows, and you'll see an easy reach set of outlets in that rear corner. That's perfect for like a coffee maker corner. Then down below the sink, you can see some good shelf space. But if we also pop those four drawers, I mean, four drawers down to the floor here open, you can see a uh, chunk of space also below the refrigerator. There's every little nook and cranny they could here they they really open it up now the trick with these smaller rear kitchens is there's still a, a somewhat limited amount of countertop space but i like the way that they have the sink and the stove set up so that you do still have this rear corner chunk available now most of us are right-handed not all of us but most of us so if we do use the stove top which previous owners don't look like they did you can set your stirring spoon or whatever to the right of whatever you're stirring which feels very natural and organic now over here the entertainment center that tv does swing out by the way so you don't have to do a 90 degree neck wrecker to be able to see that thing and to the right you see some usb plugs and the uh bluetooth dvd player um it's easy to reach you know it's right by the door what, what i like about that being by the door is if we're outside we want to just pop in change the radio turn it up or down real quick you don't have to go traipsing through the whole camper although if you do being carpetless, it is obviously easy to keep clean and, and sweep yourself right back out there. Now, the sofa slide is just a small, shallow slide. And when that sofa closes, it will only come up to about where that door begins. So you will maintain 100% full travel access. The sofa, that you could use the RV completely without ever touching the slide out. You don't have to run the slide on this one whatsoever. You're just going to enjoy the extra living space you get when you do. So if you have to make like a little overnighter parking lot stop or something like that at a rest area or the walmarts that allow things like that you'll be good to go here um there is no skylight above the shower which does mean that a taller person like me would have to duck a little bit but i spend what what do you spend eight minutes in the shower you spend the rest of your time outside if that's the only thing that i'm going to encounter in this rv i could make it work you know i don't mind sacrificing a little bit i think sometimes um ooh, i like that big mirror I, I had that door open for you so i didn't realize there was a big mirror here it makes this room look and feel really large this whole walkthrough bath but what i was getting at is i don't mind if i have to make little sacrifices in a camper i think there's some people who go well i don't have to do that at home why do i have to do that in a camper and you know i guess you have to buy according to what feels comfortable to you but this isn't a house we're playing house it's a smaller version of things like a house but it's not a house directly and sometimes little things are used a little differently now sliding privacy door here this is a camp queen up front but if you notice they left plenty of room if you want to upgrade that to a, a longer true queen bed a 60 by 80 bed you would have the room to do that it's a 60 by 70 what four currently although this manufacturer they use the same bed as everybody else 
It always makes me laugh. They advertise theirs as 60 by 75. So I don't know if what they're doing is like pulling on that little tag at the end of the bed and measuring that, but it's the same Camp Queen bed that everybody else has. What is kind of handy though, hanging closets on both sides of the bed. You've got uh, some household plugs on both sides of the bed for CPAP users or phone chargers. If you feel like adding a TV, with this being a wood studded sidewall, roughly every 16 inches on center up here, you've got a stud you can tap into. Now everybody knows to properly calibrate a stud finder. What you got to do first, guys, is you, you turn it on, you hold it up to your chest, and then you make a beep, you go, yup, there's one, and then it's properly calibrated, right? Now, it's got a good-sized pass-through, but you don't really see a lot of it because it's currently occupied by a full RV cover that goes with this RV when it's sold. That's a little solar prep plug next to that, by the way. I don't know if that cover was maybe only used in the winter because there obviously there is a little very minor amount of weathering on some of the decals specifically on the nose over here i got a feeling the nose faced the sun for the most part but uh overall i mean the exterior looks good the tires look good the uh, metal isn't like oxidized and like your propane cover and stuff that stuff isn't like um faded from the sun so i think it just unfortunately had a, a little glitch on a decal but overall I mean, inside and outside, it's clean. Looks like it was well cared for. Now, this is the uh, Sportsman LE series, which is their more basic line. Every manufacturer seems to have like a, a basic line and then a jazzy pants line. That means this, uh, this one doesn't have any like the underbelly enclosure treatments, things like that. But frankly, the way that most of us camp, if we're really being honest with each other, folks, we talk so much about, oh, it's got the enclosed belly and it's cold camp rated. Almost nobody actually camps like that. People buy campers with those features because it makes them feel good, not because they're really going to benefit from them most of the time. Now, there's certainly cold camp enthusiasts out there, but the vast majority of us, like I'll ask people, are you going to be camping when there's snowflakes flying? And their answer is, heck no. Well, if that statement is true of you, then this camper is perfectly fine. And frankly, any camper is perfectly fine because you want to know a mystical, magical secret, ladies and gentlemen. Every camper is proven not to have freezing pipes all the way down to at least 32 degrees. And I say that to people all the time and they go, wow, that's really cold. And the thing that people don't realize is 32 degrees is the temperature at which water freezes. Nothing, nothing can freeze before 32 degrees. And it has to get that cold before it's even an issue. So many people, I just don't think realize that. Anyway, power awning does the uh, work for us. And uh, the uh, door here does have that extra large handle for easy kind of come and go stuff. Now, if you're interested in a set of like the, the stable steps, we can probably get those done for you down at our sister store, Halet RV, just a mile west of here down the street. I like the galvanized um, protected wheel wells. Now they don't have like fancy fender trim or anything like that, but frankly, I'm not a big fan of that stuff anyway, because it might look a little pretty up front, but it's also easy to get snagged on. Oh, speaking of, I just noticed this. I did not notice that my first pass is through. And I hope you folks appreciate the transparency that we conduct ourselves with here at Halet RV. There's a ding and a snag in the uh, aluminum there. Let me get up on this. Okay, well, it's not punched through the metal. It's not a leak factory or anything like that. I'm glad we stumbled into that because if I see something, I say something. I don't ever like to give you like, half the story i always want to give you all the information i can and that that little bump there it just really doesn't scare me knowing what i know the way things always tend to work out it was probably not even uh the fault of the original owners it was probably somebody else walking around bumped into ran into snagged into it but doesn't appear to really be it's just minor and cosmetic and even with a trained eye i missed it the first time around and i know what i'm looking for so <laughs> if you're okay with a little bump, a little bruise, like any, you know, I've always bought used cars. I've never bought a new car. They always have a little bump somewhere. And you know what? I love finding them. You know why? It saves me money. <laughs> I don't mind a little cosmetic ding as long as she's structurally sound. That's just me though. If that doesn't fit you, that's fine. Nothing says you have to buy it, but know that we'll shoot you straight down here. So whether it's this one or another one, we'll shoot, you know, you can buy with confidence at, at A1 RV and Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And have an A1 day, everyone.